Okay, so here's a quick little overview of everything that we're using with Aubrey Breezy, our fourth, fifth grader. Uh, we school year round, so grades kind of blend together around here. Plus, we don't use anything on grade level. We go by ability or interest uh, versus grade level. I used to worry about that stuff, but I don't anymore because I don't care. Um, so I'm going to do this as if you hadn't seen any of the other videos. Um, <laughs> so if I'm going over some of the same curriculum, it's because we use that for all of our children. Um, let's see. So I'm just going to go ahead and jump in. I'm going to start actually with our language arts, which we are using the good and the beautiful. So, and I've done an, um, an up close video. I know it's not the best quality. I was having a lot of trouble getting the videos to upload. So actually, let me just move this over there and try that. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, uh, this is level one. Um, I wouldn't say these are grade level either. I said that before, but um, do the, uh, if you're interested in this curriculum, do the um, placement tests on the website. It'll help you figure out where your kid should be if you're not sure. Um, we pretty well knew where she should be. She has about a third, fourth grade reading level. Uh, she is dyslexic, um, so, and my husband is too, so um, he can relate to her with that. So I'm just gonna, I'm sorry, I'm just showing you this and talking. Um, so this is the reader that goes with it and it's beautiful. And it progresses uh, to become smaller words, longer stories. Isn't it beautiful though? It's incredibly charming and wholesome. This is a huge part why we love the good and the beautiful. It's our favorite, favorite, favorite curriculum. And I've never been a fan of pretty much any curriculum, really. I always skip around, but I love this. So this is the reader. And then you also get the course book. This is, um, so the, the child writes in this, so you'll need one per, per kid, but it's not super expensive. You cite words, spelling words. Oh yeah, let me just say, so it, um, the language arts covers phonics in level one. Phonics, reading, spelling, writing, literature, grammar, punctuation, and art appreciation in one book. So minimalism, yay, fewer things, more done. So poetry as poetry memorization beginning. I'm not gonna go into super depth with this because I have done a separate video on it and I'll just link that below when I get the blog post up, which it will by the time I post this so that comment was moot. Um, I just love, love this. And Aubrey loves this and she's never loved any language arts curriculum so that's saying a lot. Because <laughs> reading doesn't come easy to her. So. so this is what we use. And since it covers so many topics, every day is not the same. Um, and we love that, because we get bored easily, which leads me into history. Also the same company, The Good and the Beautiful. This is history year one. And real quick, because I have a video separate on this, but here's the course guide. It is grades K through 12. It is progressive. You go through um, ancient history through modern history every year, just learning different topics about the time periods. So you get an overview, as well as building on what you've already learned, which is awesome. So there's a course book, and the whole reason we love it is, well, a big, big reason why we love it. It is Christian uh, curriculum for all faiths. Uh, the creator is um, LDS, but it's not written just for LDS. It's written for all Christians. Um, she worked together with lots of different Christian faiths so that we could all use it. She's my hero. That's awesome. So this beautiful, beautiful book is just, uh, I love it. Oh, and there's a game. I showed it in the other video and it's in the history video. You'll be able to see how it's played and everything. Um, my kids are playing it earlier. If you were on my Instagram feed, you, you'll see them playing this pretty often. So, good in the beautiful history. We were originally gonna use Story of the World and um, these books by Terry Johnson, uh, What Really Happened in the Medieval Times, and she has it for ancient and uh, modern times and uh, we're gonna get all of them because they're they're really good just to read aloud anyways And we had originally set on doing medieval times before I heard of the good and the beautiful So uh, we are doing these and what we do is we just I read a section at a time and They are notebook to it and then put it in a portfolio So these are wonderful. So basically it goes to the time period and just uh, has uh, living stories. If you're familiar with Charlotte Mason, you know what that means. It's not a dry textbook. So they're living stories about the people of that time period. Notable people. So, you know, we're learning about um, uh, St. Patrick. So there's that. Uh, science. 
I did a video on our nature science, but I'm gonna show you what we used for astronomy since that's the focus my kids wanted to do. We are using what you aren't being told about astronomy DVD series. Um, this one is called Our Created Solar System. This was created by a guy who was originally an atheist. And um, if you haven't read on my blog, I also used to be an atheist. I was raised Muslim and then uh, I was an atheist. And now I'm a Christ follower. So um, he also was an atheist and through be and he was a scientist for NASA and through his studies being a scientist working for NASA, he discovered that evolution and Big Bang and all that stuff does not hold up scientifically and he shows the facts in the DVDs to prove it. And so the other two in that series are, which are being told about astronomy, are Created Universe. That's volume three, I'm showing you that of order, my bad. Uh, volume two is Our Created Stars and Galaxies. And these are beautiful too, I love those DVDs. Awesome, awesome. Let's see, I should have shown you this after we did, after I showed you the language arts. Um, for Aubrey, we do take the good and the beautiful slowly. Um, because of her dyslexia, I don't want to over, I don't want her to be overwhelmed. So we take it slow and get her pace. Um, on days when we don't do that, we do the good and the beautiful, you know, three to five times a week. So on the weeks when we do it three, I made these little books out of, um, what is this? Uh, computer printer paper and cardstock. And I like, I just like these colors. Um, and I stapled these and I like the stapling better than the um, whole punch thing, but you could do that way too. Um, and then she's making her own books and stories. This is an idea I got from um, Julie Bogart of Brave Rider. So we do Brave Rider lifestyle. We do Tea Time Tuesdays and stuff like that. And then in our uh, decomposition books, this is my favorite brand because this is a, this is a heavy duty, except for this part, <laughs> um, composition book. It holds it better than the other ones we have. So she does copy work, Bible verse writing, drawing apparently trying to find some other stuff yeah scribbling <laughs> so we do lots of um, copy works that helps with spelling vocabulary handwriting we kind of mix it all together um, because simpler that's why we also use these letter tiles with the good and the beautiful so it's called pairs and pairs and um, they're like, so they make this really, don't think I'm weird, or just, you know what, fine, I'm weird. They make like a cool sound. I like the, they're cool to the touch, and they're like, I don't know, and they have cool different prints on them. I like them. So I, maybe I'm a little tactile learner too. So we use these to spell out spelling words, vocabulary, sight words, stuff like that. And the kids like playing with them. Well, you know, this, we use this for Aubrey and Everett. So pairs and pairs, it's pretty cheap. I think like five, seven dollars, I'm not sure. So for, um, Nature Study, also going along with Nature Study, we do have watercolors and these watercolor brushes that are filled with water. Um, I already did, I'll just link the video below. Um, I think that's it. Oh no, math, huh? <laughs> just kidding. So, let me see if I can get this out. out of the way. Okay, math. For math, we do two things. So, one of the biggest things we do is Foundations in Personal Finance, the middle school edition. This is by Dave Ramsey, and this is the homeschool edition. I don't think it's that different from maybe the public school edition. Um, we didn't do finance in public school, and this would have really helped my husband and I out for sure. Um, so this is a DVD set. It's worth every dollar, um, absolutely. I'm not getting paid by them. I'm not getting paid by any of these companies, actually. Um, so, so just in case, if you're wondering my motives, it's just because I like this stuff, and I want to share it with you guys. Um, no one's paying me. So. Um, see uh, it has the DVDs and you watch them and they're very entertaining and the kids think they're funny and they're short um, and then they kind of fill this out as you go along in the DVD and they fill in the blanks like that and it's awesome this is the best thing ever and we are using Matthew C we switched to Matthew C from teaching textbooks teaching textbooks is amazing uh, the problem is that I have one laptop and three kids, and so that's just, I don't have enough space. My laptop is already screaming at me when I try to do these videos and, and, um, and photos for you guys. <laughs> so um, she watches the DVD and then she does the lesson. She hasn't really needed the DVD um, as much when she got started, when she got used to the curriculum, um, and she just kind of blasts through it. Um, she could have started in the higher levels, but she wanted to master, she loves math. She, she does math for fun. So um, this is the multiplication, and it's not done by grades. 
So she's gonna master multiplication, which this is really awesome for that. And then she'll master division, and then I think it's fractions and then decimals, and so on and so forth. I think from pre-algebra on, it's basically the same as every other uh, curriculum levels wise. Um, so there's that. So the only other thing left to show you is that we um, do these portfolios, and I've uh, done a video on our portfolios, but I'll just show you a little bit. So uh, we laminate their work, and I, it's all subjects that we put in here. And we do watercolors, chalk, markers, everything. So, and this is like our St. Patrick thing that we were just showing you from um, what really happened in the medieval times. And here's some of our notebooking pages from uh, The Good and the Beautiful History. And map work, that's also from The Good and the Beautiful. And there's a printed notebooking page you could do, but uh, I wanted my kids to draw the maps and they really enjoyed that. So, so that's just what the portfolios looks like. And I'll end up, and I'll just link that below, but we um, will end up spiral bounding these, binding these, bind. I don't know what I just said. I'm tired. All right, so also anytime she's, uh, she can, uh, she's working through these chapter books to Critter Club. They're uh, a larger print, which I've noticed has been uh, helpful for her and having a little bit of il illustrations helps her uh, with her dyslexia as far as being able to follow along easier and read it easier. Um, so with dyslexia, she'll sub words and put letters there that aren't there. So that's uh, what we're working on. She's doing great though. So that's awesome. That's, I think that's everything. So it looks like a lot, but we get this done. We do, I'll do a day in the life. We'll probably have to do a few of them because all of our days are different and there's really no typical day. So, but that's basically it. So I hope that helped to show you what we're using for fourth and fifth grade. She's going into the, the middle school ages, so we've added a little bit more. When I do Everett's video tomorrow, you'll see that it's <laughs> very different for a younger grades for us. So everything that I just showed you is as we are moving into the middle school years with Aubrey. Um, so that's maybe a little more than what we used to. So if we're doing su super minimal, um, which we do at times, we usually, uh, since we school year round, we have weeks where we uh, completely unschool and we have weeks where we go minimal and are minimal, even more minimal than what we're using because we used to have a lot more stuff than what you just saw. Um, and that's really not much and it doesn't take very long to, to do. Um, but if we're going super minimal, so we would have a Bible, a notebook for copy work, dictation, free writing, stuff like that to cover English. Um, whatever books she wanted to read, we would still do The Good and the Beautiful for history because it's it's perfect, guys. Like I, I used to hesitate in calling it perfect, but that it, it is it's ever it's all it's everything. <laughs> so I'm so glad we uh, we found that. Um, and a math book. Um, with math, I would definitely be doing some finance. You don't have to use curriculum for any of these things, but well, maybe math. If you hate teaching math, that might be good. But there's free stuff you can use online. So basically, those would be like our five small things that we would do you know nature we would just be outside um art notebooking which we do anyways but because my kids are interested in certain topics we just utilize tools so we don't do anything that feels like so much and just like i talked about in our um in another video talking about m what minimalist homeschooling is um and how it got started it's gonna be whatever you make it so as long as it's not feeling overloaded and you're not feeling so stressed out like you have too much to do um that's what it's about peace and it's about calm in your homeschool um, and so for us this is it and it changes you know so this is it right now and um, like I said we do some weeks we're unschooling and some weeks we're you know doing minimalist and we're just kind of like copying down passages out of books all of it is schooling all of it is learning um, so I hope that helps um, I hope this helped I don't know so um, if you have any questions just leave it below and you can subscribe like no I can't Everybody says that in their videos, so like I feel like I'm supposed to like it's like a checklist You're supposed to like say at the end of your video, but I never say that so like and subscribe if you want to if you don't That's cool, too. I'm down with that um, So if you have any questions just email me or leave a comment below I um, I get a lot of emails and messages and comments th through all the different places on social media 
um, every day. So it might take me like two or three weeks. I'm so sorry to get back to everybody because I like to respond to everybody. Um, and so it takes me a long time to get back. So I hope um, that you'll just bear with me and um, be patient. I'm trying. <laughs> Um, running a couple companies and homeschooling and my husband's always gone so um, sometimes it takes me a while to get things done so I hope this was helpful and I just said that like eight times so I hope it was <laughs> um, again if you have any questions just hit me up and I will get back to you as soon as I can um, have a good day